This is the Narbox 2.0 SSD. You may have never heard of it, or maybe you have heard of it, but you're not sure exactly what it does. It's a rugged backup SSD, wireless, streamlined, integrated workflow hub device. I first thought this was just like an external drive for backup, but it's not. And I'm gonna take you through my Narbox journey and the features in this latest firmware update that really convinced me that this is a tool that I would use but you know what to start with, let's look at backup. I always worry about backup. If I'm doing a professional shoot, one of the first things that I wanna do when I'm done shooting is get a second copy of the files. And I don't care if it's on a laptop or on a portable hard drive that's connected to my laptop or if it's another SSD, it doesn't matter to me. One of the reasons that I use the cinema cameras that I do is because they have dual SD card slots. So I can immediately have another copy. But because I review so many cameras, some of them do have dual SD card slots, but most of them don't, I started researching options and that's how I came across the Narbox. To be totally honest, when I first saw it, I assumed it was a portable SSD. I just didn't know that there was anything out there that was quite like this. It always looked really cool, which I know shouldn't matter, but you know, totally does. Like I really like these little ridges and they look like it was gonna be really comfortable to hold. And it's pretty much the size of my iPhone, except for it's obviously a little bit thicker. Now I knew that it was built to military specs, which covers water, dust, and shock resistance. And it has these rubber gaskets that help seal the different ports on both sides. Now I'm a pretty curious person by nature, so something just didn't add up here. Like, how could a one terabyte Narbox cost $899 when I can get a Lacey or a SanDisk, a G drive or anything like that for a lot less? So I go into my research mode, I'm like watching videos, I'm reading reviews, and then I realize that this is not a portable SSD. Well, it's actually also a portable SSD, but it's a lot more than just that. All right, so let me tell you a story which still makes me sad to this day. So about a year ago, we went on vacation to Italy and it was awesome. We went to a bunch of different regions, we stayed at an amazing countryside villa, and I got extremely sick on my birthday, I almost died, I passed out, and Luckily, this Italian man found me face down, called an ambulance, and then a couple of days later, I was back to normal. But that's not really the important part of the story. Well, I guess it's important because otherwise we wouldn't have the rest of the story, but you know what I mean. So anyways, I was reviewing a bunch of cameras at the time, so I had them with me the whole trip, and I also brought along my drone. And at the end of each day or every couple of days, I would back everything up to my laptop. And when we would go on a day trip, I wouldn't always wanna bring my laptop with me because my bag was already super heavy. So there was one day where I shot drone footage pretty much the entire day, including sunset. I got awesome footage and then the next day I got sunrise footage and footage around the villa and then we went out for the entire day. So we're on this drive, we stop at different points and I'm getting really cool shots. We get back in the car, we drive for like an hour and a half, pull over again, get some more footage and I'm like, I can't wait to get back and see everything I shot. All right, so but then we get to this one valley and I'm doing a parallax shot of the one side, so I'm against the other side of the valley. And I know that I'm pretty high up above ground level, but what I didn't take into account was just how deep the valley was, and all of a sudden, boom. So my Mavic Pro is on the side of the mountain somewhere in central Italy, and all I have left is the 720 footage that was sent to my phone, and even at that I only have the four gigabytes, I think, until the phone filled up. And if I only had the Narbox with me, I would still have everything backed up at least until that last flight. And I'll explain why, and that's only taking into consideration the smart backup feature of the Narbox, and that's really just the beginning, so let's take a closer look. By the way, if you're enjoying the video so far, let me know by giving it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more photography and video reviews and tutorials, join the community by hitting the subscribe and notification button. It really helps me a lot. All right, so back to the Narbox. I know that I was being kind of silly in the beginning when I described it, but 
It's a rugged backup and file management device, and it was designed specifically for professional content creators. And don't get me wrong, I do like the fact that it lets me easily do backups, and I can get this done immediately after the shoot when I'm driving home or even while I'm packing up. But what I really appreciate about the Narbox is how it improves my overall workflow. One thing that I'm almost always willing to invest in is saving time. If there's something that I do every day and there's a piece of software or a piece of gear that can actually save me 30 minutes a day, it'd be super difficult for someone to convince me not to buy it. Because all that time adds up and it's like two and a half hours a week, which is 50 weeks is like, I don't know, 125 hours and that's a ton of time. All right, so how does the Narbox actually save me time? Well, first of all, let's talk a little bit about the tech. Like beyond the NVMe SSD, it has an Intel quad core CPU, 802.11 AC Wi-Fi, an SD card slot, two USB-C ports, a micro HDMI port, a couple of buttons for control and an OLED screen. And what makes this such a powerful tool for me is the CPU because it's essentially operating as a small computer and I can use that power to automate some of the kind of annoying and tedious things that I find myself having to do over and over. And I'll give you a couple of examples that work for me and I think could work for you. And let me just address this right off the bat. Is there a way to accomplish all these things that I'm gonna mention without a Narbox? Well, yeah, like I've been doing it for years, but for me, this is about efficiency and convenience. So for example, right now I'm testing four cameras, the Sony uh, A6600, the A6100, the Nikon Z50, and the Panasonic GH5. And yeah, it's actually happening. I'm using a GH5 and a Nikon. I'm going back to my roots. So on any given day, I have at the very least one and all the way up to four cameras with me. And I'll end up shooting some combination of JPEG, RAW, and video files. So at the end of each day, I'd have to come home and offload somewhere between one and four SD cards at my workstation. And depending on which brand of camera I'm using, the process of separating the images and video files is different. And I'd have to split up the JPEGs and the RAW, and that's an extra step. So the Narbox lets me do a few things. First of all, I back everything up as I'm driving home. So by the time I get home, I already have a second copy of the files. And rather than drop everything into one folder, which would get super messy with multiple cameras, I created import presets. And these are all things that I did using the SafeKeep app, and I only needed to set them up once and it took me all of about two minutes. So I have four different presets now, one named after each camera that I'm testing or in my normal workflow, it would be one for each of my cameras. And I can just select the one that I want, hit the right button and it will import all those files into the correct subfolder on the Narbox. But it does a lot more than that. So first I have flattened folders selected, which brings all the subfolders up to the root. So for example, if I'm using a Sony camera, I don't have to go into private and then M4 root and then clip to find all my video files. And then have to go into DCIM and then whatever subfolder the images are to find them. Next, I use a feature called folder by extension, which does exactly what you think it would do based on the name. It creates subfolders based on file extensions. So it creates a JPEG folder and moves all my JPEGs to it. Another one, named ARW or CR3 or RW2, NEF, it doesn't matter depending on which camera I'm using, and it moves all my RAW files to it. And then another folder called MP4 for all my video files. And the last feature that I have turned on is called Smart Backup, and that's what I was talking about early on. And what that does is an incremental backup. So the first time I do a backup from a card, it'll copy all the files over. But then if I take that card, put it back in the camera, take some more shots and use Smart Backup again, it will only copy the new files over. And what it does is use a combination of the name, directory, and the date modified metadata to determine whether a file is a duplicate. One other thing that I have turned on is MD5 checksum, which basically compares the files that were copied over with the original files to make sure that they're identical. So by the time I get home, I already have all of this done and I'm ready to move all my files to my NAS. This is one of the new features of the 2.5.0 firmware and I can use a USB-C to Ethernet adapter 
and connect the NAR box to my Synology disk station. Now I could also use Wi-Fi, but it's just a lot faster to use the adapter. And now I can back all my files up to my disk station and still use things like Smart Backup and MD5 checksum. Now I know that Narbox worked with Synology when developing this implementation, and I assume they did this because Synology is one of the leaders in the field, but this actually works with any NAS as far as I know. So if you're using like a QNAP, or a Drobo, you should be just fine. Now the important thing here is that instead of having to start messing around with multiple SD cards and copying files into specific folders, I can just move them all at once and then organize them once they're on the disk station, which is a lot faster. So that's one way that the Narbox saves me time. When I was doing things manually, I'd start the backup of one folder and then I'd leave the computer and I'd forget about it for like 20 minutes come back then I realize that I'm still in the middle of backup, do another folder or have to switch cards and it would just take me a lot longer. All right, so that workflow works really well for me when I'm driving, but let me give you another example. So sometimes when I go shooting with another person and they're driving or we're on a trip and we have a lot of time in the car, I can do all of my calling before I even move files to my NAS. I can use the Select app, which is powered by a photo mechanic. And I can preview and star my images right from my phone. And one of the features in the firmware 2.5.0 is that the metadata can now be saved to an XMP sidecar file, which is compatible with photos like Photo Mechanic and Lightroom Classic. And this is a really important update because if you write the metadata to the file itself, then you're changing the date modified metadata, which will lead to duplicate files when you're using the smart backup. And then also with persistent metadata in the Select app, I can now see right on my phone which files already have had metadata applied to them and which haven't. And this makes it super easy for me to stop mid call and then continue later. So for example, if I have 10 minutes where I'm just kind of waiting around, I can get some work done without having to take my laptop out, boot it, and then find a place to sit. The Narbox can be in my pocket, it could be in my bag, and I'm just working on my phone. And these little pockets throughout the day add up and they end up saving me a lot of time and this is work that I would normally have to do once I get back to the studio. One of the things that was super impressive is the speed of the raw images preview, which I think is because of the photo mechanic imaging engine. I imported a couple of hundred raw and JPEG files because I always shoot in both. And then in select, the thumbnails were created super fast and I was just able to scroll through the raw images without having to wait and that's really nice for such a small device. You can also create what they call workspaces, which basically means you're selecting a subset of the images to work with. And then narrows down how many files and previews the Narbox has to create, which again helps speed things up. So the last and probably most basic way to use the Narbox is as an external hard drive. On longer trips, that's how I manage my files. I back up my multiple SD cards to the Narbox using Smart Backup, and then I connect the Narbox to my laptop in mass storage mode using a USB-C cable. I can do all of my work without having to copy the files to my laptop. Then when I'm back in the studio, I just move everything over the same way that I described before. Now there are a few opportunities for improvements that I came across when I was using the Narbox. First is that there are no preset specific backup settings. So for example, if I select Smart Backup or Flatten Folders, it will apply that to all of my presets and all of my backups. And here is where this was important. I want flattened folders and folder by extension when I back up an SD card to the Narbox because it saves me a lot of time when it comes to sorting file types. But I don't want that setting when I'm backing up the entire content of the Narbox to my NAS because I want to keep the organized folder structure that I created on the Narbox. So right now I have to toggle this setting on and off for the two tasks. The second opportunity for improvement is that there is no auto shut off setting. So I'm super forgetful and if I leave the device on, it will stay on until the battery runs out. It would be cool if I could just select a setting like five, 10 or 20 minutes, and then have the device automatically shut off if it's been idle for that long. Now luckily the Narbox charges really fast so when that happens, I can very quickly get it back to fully charged and also because there are two USB-C ports, 
I can use one for power and another one for data transfer. So even if the device was completely dead when I got home, I can still do my backup without having to wait for it to fully charge. So I talked to Narbox about both of these issues and they were telling me that they were already working on adding those features. And I love the fact that their approach is to upgrade this product rather than saying something like that's gonna be available in the next model. I'm also super curious to know what other features they have coming and I'll let you guys know on Twitter and Instagram when I find out. All right, so this is how I incorporate the Narbox into my workflow. I'd love to know what you thought about it and is this something that you would get? and how would you use it? If you already have one, let me know if you have any other workflow advice for me. I'd love to learn from you guys. There are three storage size options available, 256, a 512, and a one terabyte. And I'll put links in the description to where you can buy them because there are always specials and discounts and those links will automatically be updated with the lowest prices. I really hope I was able to give you a good overview of the Narbox 2.0 SSD. And if I did, please let me know by giving this video a thumbs up, tweet it, share it, and if you haven't yet, join the community by hitting the subscribe and notification buttons. If you don't follow me on Twitter yet, you should. We always have super interesting conversation there and you can also find me on Instagram and Facebook at Tech Gear Talk. You know what I always say, buy it nice or buy it twice. Good luck and see you soon.